Ladies and gentlemen, today marks another significant milestone in the development of our United States Space Force as we officially commission and enlist our newest members from USAFA into the Space Force. The host for today's ceremony is Major General Michelle Edmondson, the Commandant of Cadets. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of honors and the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We would like to extend a warm welcome and sincere thank you to our senior leader team who have joined us here this afternoon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our host, Major General Edmondson. Thank you. And really, a huge thanks to the whole team, um, Colonel Greenwood and team, for putting this together. Um, it's been long awaited. Uh, we tried a couple of times. The scrolls weren't signed. Um, so here we finally are. So Cap, thanks for everything that you and the team have done. Uh, sir, thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of this. Um, General Clark, it's, I think it's a great next step um, in what we're doing at USAFA and where we're going, and just another indication of one more way for the institution to lead the way. So I'm glad to be a part of that team and do this together with this awesome team. Otis, thank you for being here. And General Latendra, thanks for being a part of such a historic event for us. Um, I'm really excited that the families could be here. Um, I'm glad that we've come this far in our COVID world that we could bring you here to be a part of history for so many different reasons. And what I really want to do is, is spend a little bit of time really talking to the families about just how big of a deal this is and how important this is, not just for the people that are going to put those blue threads on today, not just for the institution, but really for the Air Force and for our nation, for the Space Force, and what this means as we, as we move forward. And I think that we have to take a second to pause and think about where we sit to do this and have this event here in Polaris Hall, the North Star, what that means to this institution and what it means to the Space Force as the center of the Delta and really their guiding principles and core values that so will I think help guide where we go um, together as a service and a force. So, so fitting that we can be here. And I think even next week, General D.T. Thompson is going to have his promotion ceremony here in Polaris Hall. The SECAF had her swearing in here in Polaris Hall. And just so representative, I think, of who we are as an institution and what this means to the Space Force. So exciting that we could do it together. So I do want to take a little walk down History Lane um, and talk about how we got here 
and how appreciative I am to get to be a part of this because of the journey I've been on um, as we've gone through the stages of creating a separate service. So really, you know, hard to imagine that it was you know, February of 2019 that I found myself in the Oval Office as the president signed SPD4, directing the Department of Defense to create a sixth branch of the armed forces. Um, and it was quick. I showed up at the White House in August, and six months later, I found myself in the Oval Office, having had part of the pen in authoring that document. And then not much later, we created the 11th COCOM with US Space Command last fall, and officially reestablished established the 11th Combatant Command. And then only a few months later in December, stood up the Space Force. And since then, I think we've had 1,200, about 1,200 officers that have made the transition to the Space Force and about 900 enlisted members that have made the transition. We also had the incredible privilege of commissioning the first second lieutenants into the Space Force when we had that historic graduation on the Terrazzo. And no one will ever forget the sight of those platinum sashes marching up the core values ramps, ramp to the Terrazzo. So really, I think, unbelievable how far we've come as a nation, how quickly we have done this, and how exciting it is to welcome the next batch. But I think for the families, I think that, you know, I really want to talk about how historic this is. When was the last time we created another branch of the armed services? It was the creation of the United States Air Force. And here we are today transferring another handful into the newest branch of the armed services. And I think it's really important to talk about why. You know, why did we create an 11th combatant command? Why did we create a separate service? It's not because it is the, the Air Force that I grew up in, um, in Air Force Space Command. That's not why we're doing this. That's not what got us here. What got us here it is, is that it is imperative for the national security of the United States of America that we maintain the high ground in space. We all very much understand what the high ground in air looks like. We all understand what air supremacy looks like. But what does that look like in space? That's what this is about. This is about protecting our on-orbit assets. This is about defending our right to have the first mover advantage in space. And many will tell you that the one that can move first and has the strategic advantage is the one that will win. And there will no longer be a war that is confined to the surface of the Earth. All wars will extend to, if not start, in space. Our job now is to figure out how to protect our assets, how to defend our assets. And that is a new conversation in the space world. What does a threat look, look like on orbit? What does hostile intent look like on orbit? What authorities do I need as a commander to protect my assets on orbit? That's a very different conversation than what we know when we talk about air superiority. And then I think it's really important to talk about the role you get to play here at this institution as we move forward. For us, it's about having the right space professionals that can develop and mentor those lieutenants that we will commission into the Space Force. It's about having the right space professionals that understand why we needed to create a sixth branch of the armed forces. It's exciting. It's exciting for us. It's exciting for the cadets. It's exciting for the institution. Um, it's about us demonstrating to General Raymond and the Space Force that we are there academy. That yes, we belong to the Department of the Air Force, and yes, we're the United States Air Force Academy, but we're also the United States Space Forces Academy. 
And you are the people that are going to lead the way for us as we define what that looks like. So it's such an exciting time. To the families, I'm so glad that you get to be here to witness history. You get to be here to take off that coyote brown tag and put on those blue threads um, and help us transition these amazing officers and our one stellar enlisted member into the United States Space Force today. So with that, thank you everybody for being a part of this. And it looks like you guys are ready to do this. So let's get the families up here and make this happen. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Major General Edmondson. Since its establishment on December 20th, 2019, the United States Space Force continues to stand up as a separate service to maintain and enhance the competitive edge of the Department of Defense in space while adapting to new strategic challenges. As part of the United States Space Force development, Air Force personnel in space-related career fields will transfer into the Space Force and become Space Force service members. Today, our space professionals will join the Chief of Space Operations, the Senior Enlisted Advisor, 86 USAFA graduates from the class of 2020, and the other space operators across the globe who became official members of the United States Space Force on 1 September. To officially commemorate this historic moment, our newest members of the United States Space Force will now begin the process of removing the Air Force name tapes and flags from their uniforms and replace them with Space Force name tapes and flags to signify their official induction and transfer into the United States Space Force. Unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, only immediate family members will be allowed to pin on our inductees. As your name is called, please come to the stage. Family members, as your inductee's name is called, please join them on stage. Our first Space Force officer inductee is Major Jamil Choo Choo Brown. Major Brown is an 11 year space professional from Mansfield, Texas. He's a graduate of Baylor University and is also a weapons school graduate. He is currently serving as the first ever Institute for Future Conflict Fellow and is responsible for instructing in the Political Science Department, developing the Institute for Future Conflict and conducting research regarding strategic leadership and future conflict. Our next Space Force inductee is Major Cameron Cunningham. Major Cunningham is a 12-year space professional from Denver, Colorado, and is a USAFA grad, class of 2008. He currently serves as the director of the Cadet Space Operations Squadron here at USAFA, operating two on-orbit spacecraft in support of Air Force Research Labs and the National Reconnaissance Office. Our next Space Force inductee is Major Theodore Givler. Major Givler is being joined by his sons Asher and Grayson, who will conduct the pinning on of their dad. Major Givler is a 14-year space professional from Charleston, South Carolina. He is currently serving in the USAFA faculty pipeline and will begin teaching in the Department of History in January 2021. Major Givler's operational background includes ICBMs, space lift, and satellite command and control. Most recently, Major Givler served as the Space Operation Operator Functional Manager at Headquarters Air Force Space Command, where he advanced a variety of force development initiatives to include the original groundwork for the United States Space Force macro organizational structure. Major Givler was recently selected for Lieutenant Colonel and will carry that promotion over into the Space Force. Our next Space Force inductee is Major Christopher Taylor.
Major Taylor is an 11 year space professional and is from Montgomery, Alabama. He is currently in his academic year with his cohort at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs in preparation to take command next summer as an air officer commanding at USAFA. As a USAFA AOC, Major Taylor and his 20 cohort members will each lead a squadron of 110 cadets to help them attain the goal of, became, of becoming leaders of character in the Air Force and Space Force. Our next Space Force inductee is Major DJ Thomas. Major Thomas is joined by his wife, Captain Allison Thomas, and she will conduct the pinning on of her husband. Major Thomas is a 13-year space professional from Florence, Alabama, and a graduate of Auburn University. He's currently attending the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, along with Major Taylor, as part of the USAFA Air Officer Commanding Preparatory Program. Upon completion of a master's degree in counseling, he will take command of a USAFA Cadet Squadron. Our next Space Force inductee is Major Travis Tubbs. Major Tubbs' wife, Danae, and seven children, Thane, Tathena, Tayton, Talon, Tiankum, Tiana, and Trevin, have joined him today to conduct the pinning on of their husband and father. Major Tubbs is a 17-year space professional from Milton Free Water, Oregon, and a graduate of Oregon State University. He began his career as a nuclear missile officer and has completed space tours as a course director for undergraduate space training and as an operations planner with the Joint Functional Component Command for Space. He earned his master's degree in space operations through the Air Force Institute of Technology at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Major Tubbs most recently completed his USAFA-sponsored PhD program in crop science from Oregon State University and arrived to USAFA where he will serve as an assistant professor in the biology department. Our next Space Force inductee is Captain Clayton Gable. Captain Gable is joined by his wife, Mary, and she will conduct the pinning on. Captain Gable has seven years of space operations under his belt, serving both as a crew commander for space-based missile warning and as a mission director on the X-37B space plane. He is currently an instructor in the athletic department with a focus on combatives. Our next Space Force inductee is Captain Kendra Marion. Captain Marion is a seven-year space professional from Pensacola, Florida. She graduated from Baylor University in 2013 and currently serves as a chemistry instructor and assigned to the United States Air Force Academy Preparatory School. Captain Marion is joined and being penned on by her husband, Captain Christopher Marion.
And our final Space Force officer inductee is Captain Savannah Whitaker. Captain Whitaker is a four-year space professional and 2016 graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. She's from Paris, Kentucky. Captain Whitaker is currently an instructor of management at USAFA where she teaches Management 341 Financial Accounting. And our sole enlisted Space Force inductee is Tech Sergeant Philip Shane. He is accompanied today by his wife, Vanessa, sons, Jordan and Joshua, and their daughter, Maggie. <laughs> Tech Sergeant Shane's family will conduct the pinning on. Tech Sergeant Shane is an eight-year space professional from Houston, Texas. He currently serves as the flight chief for the FalconSat program and the Cadet Space Operations Squadron. This operational squadron at USAFA is comprised of over 110 cadets who operate and fly two FalconSat satellites currently on orbit. Major General Edmondson, will you please proceed to the stage to administer the oath of office and the oath of enlistment? It is a military tradition that the newly inducted officer and enlisted members affirm their commitment to the armed services by taking the oath of office or the oath of enlistment. This oath reminds us all of the significant pledge that American service men and women make to the support and defense of the Constitution of the United States. Listen carefully to the words of the oath. They speak to the significance of military service and to why it is such a privilege to serve. Major General Edmondson will now administer the oath of office to our new Space Force officers. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. All right, Chairman Rowe, come down. Having been appointed an officer in the United States Space Force, Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I, well, I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Please join me in congratulating our newest officer inductees into the United States Space Force. Major General Edmondson will now administer the oath of enlistment to the new Space Force enlisted personnel. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state, your full name. I state your full name. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulation and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. 
So help me God. Congratulations. Please join me in congratulating our newest enlisted member of the United States Space Force. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's historic ceremony. On behalf of the men and women of the United States Air Force Academy and the United States Space Force, thank you for joining us and celebrating our newly inducted space professionals. Please stand for the playing of the interim United States Space Force March and remain standing for the departure of the official party. If you would like to personally congratulate our new inductees to the United States Space Force, please come to the stage to form a receiving line, starting from the left to the right. Due to COVID, we will not be able to shake hands, but feel free to give each of our inductees an elbow bump. Thank you and have a great Space Force day. <laughs>